Got some scary news for you. Ben Shapiro is scheduled to speak this Thursday at the University of California, Berkeley. Whoa. Based on the reaction, you think Shapiro was the third hurricane to hit the United States in the past month. The actual LA Times headline on this quote, Berkeley braces for right-wing talk show host Ben Shapiro's visit. They're lashing themselves to the mast. Dinesh D'Souza has called Shapiro Hurricane Ben. Christina Hoff Summers tweeted this, Category 5 hurricane about to strike Berkeley. Evacuators seek shelter now. Well, the school, for its part, has already announced free counseling services for traumatized students. Can you imagine going to those? Leave your self-respect at the door. Harmeet Dillon is an RNC National Committee woman from California and a very sensible person, and she joins us tonight. Harmeet, um, I saw Robbie George, the eminent Princeton professor said yesterday, I think I'm quoting, I would sooner shut down a university than authorize counseling for students to deal with opinions they don't agree with. I mean, does anyone at Berkeley think, well, this is, we're becoming parodies? Well, I wish they would. I mean, as you may know, Tucker, I sued the uh, university last spring for refusing to allow three different conservative speakers to speak uh, uh, at the invitation of my clients, the Berkeley College Republicans. So, you know, even the dean of the Berkeley Law School came out last week and said that when Berkeley doesn't allow free access to its facilities, it's violating the First Amendment. So you would think that they would have learned now, having been sued, be a little bit more self-aware. But this has been a decades-long process of coddling these students and engaging in this leftist group think and orthodoxy. And so they, they just don't get how crazy it looks to the rest of the world. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if, if you're not from California, maybe our viewers don't understand, Berkeley, Cal Berkeley is a big deal or was. My grandmother went there in the 30s. It was considered something you bragged about. It was a very serious place. And I think on the science side, it so probably is. What kind of damage is it doing to the reputation of the university, this kind of lunacy? It's serious. I mean, there are, as you said, Tucker, multiple Nobel laureates from Berkeley. Berkeley is uh, noted to be the birthplace of the free speech movement in the United States. And yet, you know, parents got to be looking at this. And the out-of-state tuition at, at Berkeley is $66,000. So if you're looking at that, you know, it's going to be self-selecting kind of snowflake types gravitating to Berkeley. And, you know, the puppies and the group hugs and the counseling and the, the trust falls and all this crazy stuff, it doesn't really equip the students to deal with the real world where yes we have different ideas clashes people like ben shapiro will appear in your workplace and you'll have to deal with it they're not doing students any favors here <laughs> ben shapiro I mean, ben shapiro is not an inherently scary guy as far as i can tell um so do you think i mean but there is a scary element to this and that's the reaction from the left to speakers they disagree with and we've seen a lot of violence at berkeley recently and I know you've been right in the middle of some of this stuff, trying to make sure that the police protect the right of people to exercise their First Amendment prerogatives, without which they're meaningless. Are you confident the cops will do that this time, that they will actually protect people? Well, you know, stepping back for a second, Ben came to speak in my town, San Francisco, across the bay a couple of months ago. 300 people came to, show, to see him talk. No riots, no craziness, no arrests, nothing, no protesters. So right. all this mass hysteria at Berkeley is really being whipped up both by the Antifa but also being enabled by the university and frankly by the vacuum of police authority. So on multiple incidents so far this year, we've seen the police in Berkeley and the campus police um, step back, stand down and allow rioters, Antifa, uh, really criminals and domestic terrorists to overrun the city, terrorize people, break into shops and generally scare normal citizens away from going to this event. I mean, I have friends who are scared to go to this event on Thursday at Berkeley. So when things like this happened 50 years ago, a succession of administrations sent in federal troops, whether it was to Little Rock or Oxford, Mississippi. They basically said your constitutional rights cannot be violated. I don't care what your local leaders say. We're going to protect your rights as enumerated, enumerated in the Bill of Rights. Is there a place for that here, do you think? I hope not yet. Uh, Tucker, but I'll be there on the ground, as will other lawyers from my law firm, and you know, lots of witnesses. The national news media will be there to see how Berkeley reacts. I think they've gotten the message through the lawsuit that what they've been doing in terms of suppressing conservative speech is illegal. But the police are also at risk here because if they allow protesters selectively to suppress a certain viewpoint, that's a First Amendment violation as that's well. Right. And the university has cracked down on this event. So I'll give you an example. This is at Zellerbach Hall, the big hall that holds 2,000 people. Sonia Sotomayor was allowed to speak there with a full hall of 2,000 people. Bernie Sanders was allowed to speak there last year with a full hall of 2,000 people. Yet Ben Shapiro 
is such a threat to the to the uh, you know common good of UC Berkeley that they're only allowing the hall to be halfway filled. They're also shutting down half the campus around the auditorium, and they're offering this counseling. I mean, they're they're hyping it.